Hey goblins and ghouls, hey! To start off this tutorial, I'm gonna be giving my skin a little bit of a refresher by using these new Glam Glow Gravity Mud Power Ranger masks. I'm super stoked to be collabing with Glam Glow on this tutorial, especially since I'm already such a huge fan of their masks. If you're like me and you're a big fan of their chrome mask, this is really similar to that, just in two limited edition shades. So here I'm just applying a generous amount of the Rita Repulsa shade, and then I'm gonna go into the Goldar shade, which is the gold version of the mask. I'm going to, once again, apply a generous amount using a brush. I just feel like I'm spreading liquid gold all over my face, I love it. And once I've applied both shades, I'll wait 20 to 30 minutes to let it dry. You can watch Netflix, eat some snacks, gaze at your crystal ball, you know, the usual. Once it's dry, you're onto the best part ever, which is peeling off the mask. I love peeling it off in one complete piece, you know, just in case you wanna wear it later. Totally just kidding. It's Halloween, people, come on. Once I peeled off the mask, my face was so smooth and so firm, perfect for any sort of foundation or face paint for Halloween. So now that our skin is nice and prepped, I'm gonna start off this look by taking a glue stick and running it back and forth through my brows. I'm going to be blocking out my brows for this look. So I just glue my brows down, as you can see here, and then I take a comb and comb through my brows and almost press them up into my, like glue them to my forehead is essentially what I'm doing. And I'm gonna take a blow dryer and I'm going to dry my brows before proceeding. Next, I'm going into this NYX concealer palette and I'm going into that pink shade at the bottom right hand corner. I'm going to start applying this to my brows and blending it out with a beauty blender. This actually wasn't color correcting as much as I was wanting. So I ended up going in with some red lipstick. This is by Sigma. And I applied this to my brow area and then blended this out the beauty blender as well. Since my brows are 500 times darker than I thought they were in real life, this is actually going to cover the darkness of my brows and kind of color correct them. Then I'm gonna go into the Kat Von D concealer. This is in the shade L1. And I'm gonna start blending this over the top of that red lipstick since we obviously don't want red brows for this look. I mean, you can totally do that. I won't judge you, but you know what I mean. For foundation, I'm gonna be using the Kat Von D Lock It Foundation in the shade Light 42 going to use quite a bit of this since it is lighter than my skin tone. I do need to kind of pack it on. I'm using a dry beauty blender for this just because a wet beauty blender usually kind of shears it out and I definitely don't want that for this look. I put this all over my face, including over my eyebrows, on my eyelids, everywhere. Going back into that Kat Von D concealer in the shade L1, I'm gonna put this underneath my eyes and also over my eyelids. This is going to be my eyeshadow primer. I'm going to blend this out using a beauty blender. Then I'm gonna set it with the Kat Von D powder foundation. I believe this is also in the shade Light 42. I'm going to set my under eye area. After I get this all set, I'm going to blend out the concealer on my eyelids and set those with the powder as well. All right, so now I'm gonna say goodbye to my brows for good. I'm gonna go back into that powder foundation with the sponge applicator it came with. I'm gonna press firmly down onto my brows. I'm using a lot of product for this. This is going to completely cover my brows and fill in any kind of gaps or areas that were left over. Then I'm gonna brush away any excess product around my brow area. And voila, your brows are done. For my transition shade, I'm gonna be using Makeup Geek's Chickadee on a fluffy brush. I'm going to start blending this on what would normally be my brow bone, but it's going to be our crease for this look since we don't have any brows. Also gonna pull this up on the inner portion of the brow bone area. It's gonna start giving it not an evil look, but you'll see it's gonna just add some character. Also going to apply this shade to the inner and outer corners of the eyelid, almost like a halo eye or a stroke or whatever you wanna call it, that is what I'm doing here. I'm gonna do this on both sides. Although one eye we're gonna cover with black eyeshadow, I still wanna make sure it's going to be nice and blended out. So on the other side, once again, just blending it onto the brow bone, which is now our crease area, and into the inner and outer corners of the lid. Next, I'm gonna go into Kat Von D's Pastel Goth Palette into the shade Star, which is a really bright yellow shade. I'm gonna apply this to the inner brow bone area and also the outer brow bone area and the inner corners of my lids. You can add this anywhere you want a pop of yellow color though. You can get creative with it, just do you. Next, I'm gonna go into the Anastasia Beverly Hills Prism Palette into the shade Saturn. I'm gonna apply this on the inner and outer corner of my lid. Start deepening and kind of defining this halo or strobe eye effect. I'm using really small yet fluffy brushes for this so I can place the color exactly where I want it and blend it out at the same time. And you'll see here that I start connecting the inner and outer corner using an arch or bridge like motion or technique. And this is gonna create almost a faux type of crease. 
I'm also gonna bring this shadow up into that inner brow bone area, just like I was doing with the other shadows. And this is gonna give that almost hollow, yet eerie, yet beautiful kind of witch look that I'm super into. On the other side, I'm gonna do something similar. I'm gonna apply that Saturn shade on the inner and outer corner of the lid. And I'm also going to blend either corner up towards the brow bone area. However, on this side, I am not going to apply any of the Saturn shade to the crease area. It's going to be left completely blank. For the lower lash line, I'm gonna go back into that pastel goth palette into the shade Star. You're really not gonna be able to see too much of that shade because it's really overexposed right now, but I'm going to apply that on the inner and outer corner of the lower lash line. Then I'm gonna go back into that Anastasia Beverly Hills palette, pull that Saturn color, start blending it into that outer corner of my eye. And you can see I'm using more of a round motion here, not pulling it out into a cat eye, just keeping it nice and round. I'm also gonna apply this shade on the inner corner of the lower lash line I'm kind of pulling the shade down a little bit to create more of a shadow on the other side I'm gonna go back into that star shade but I'm gonna apply this all the way across the lower lash line not just the inner and outer corner and I'm gonna pull this down pretty far so we can start really blowing the lower lash line out Going back into that Saturn shade, I'm gonna start by blending this all the way across my lower lash line. Once I place that Saturn shade with a smaller brush, I'll go in with a fluffier brush. And as I go on, my brushes keep getting fluffier and fluffier just because I really wanna blow it out and have it look nice and blended, especially before we add that black shade. And as I'm blending out my lower lash line, I also try not to forget about the outer corner area. So I do blend up into that. I also kind of take it up into the brow bone area. I'm also gonna use the Saturn shade to deepen the shadow on the the inner brow bone area on both sides. All right, so now we're gonna start smoking out one eye. This is the Sigma Wicked Gel Eyeliner. I'm gonna use this on a dense brush and start packing this on the lid of the eye where we applied the Saturn shade into the crease and we blended it all across the lower lash line. That's the eye we're gonna start smoking out. So as you can see, I'm just placing this all over the lid area and I kind of winged it out just slightly, not too harsh. And without adding any more of that liner to the brush, I'm just gonna start moving around the product and softening it up a little bit, especially around the crease area. Going back into that Anastasia palette, I'm going into the black shade. I'm gonna pack this all over my lid and just a forewarning, definitely put something underneath your eye when you're using this shade because it was basically snowing black snow all over my face and I had to completely redo my foundation off camera. Uh, but that's besides the point. Anyways, I'm just going through and blending this shade out and of course blending it up into that inner kind of brow bone area, creating a nice little shadow there. I'm also gonna kind of pull this out a little bit and make it a little bit wingy on this side. Since the other side is so round, I thought maybe it would look cool to kind of have two different shapes going on in the eye area. You can go as crazy as you want with this because it's a Halloween look and there are no rules so so when creating this look I was like what is a Halloween look without black glitter so that's exactly what we're doing I'm gonna pack this eyeshadow primer all over my lid and then I'm gonna take the glitter and start just going to town and putting this all over my lid I'm so obsessed with this glitter oh my gosh I'm also gonna set this glitter using the Urban Decay setting spray it's gonna give it more of a metallic look and keep the glitter from kind of flying everywhere to line my waterline, I'm gonna be using the Sephora Retractable Waterproof Eyeliner. I'm going to run this across my lower lash line. I'm gonna take a pencil brush and start blending it out, just running it across my lower lash line and start the process of smoking this out. Going back into that black shade from the Anastasia palette, I'm going to place this across my lower lash line first using more of a detailer brush. This one's by EcoTools. And then I'm gonna go in, you'll see once again that my brushes are gonna start getting thicker and thicker as I continue to really blend this out. Going back into the Saturn shade, I'm gonna run this across my lower lash line and continue to smoke out and blow out that black shade. I'm also gonna make sure the lower lash line is blending up into that wing area that we created earlier. For mascara, I'm going to be using the Urban Decay Troublemaker Mascara. Did I already say mascara? I did. All right. Well, I'm just putting this on. That's what I'm doing. Going back into the Pastel Goth palette, I'm going to go into the shade Skull, which is my favorite matte inner corner highlight ever. It is so good. I'm just applying this on both of my inner corner areas. I'm gonna be using House of Lashes Spellbound Lashes on my smoky eye. 
And for contour, I'm gonna be using the NYX Sculpted Highlights. This is in the shade Taupe. I'm just gonna use a little dot. A little bit goes a long way on this stuff. And then I'm gonna be using this Sigma brush here. It is a contour brush to keep it nice and sharp looking. For highlight, I'm gonna be using the Sam Marcel Highlight Palette. I'm gonna use the top two gold shades and I'm going to put this on my cheekbones to make them look sharp and glowing and all of the things magical. For blush, I'll be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Blush Kit. This is from the Holiday Collection. This is the shade Terrace. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with this blush. For lipstick, I'm gonna be using this Lime Crime Velveteen in the shade Black Velvet. I'm gonna be using this on a brush. I'm gonna go way outside of my lip line and create some really high arches where the kind of points of my lips are. I'm also going to slightly drag out the outer corners of my lips so it gives it almost this witchy yet clown vibe. I don't know, but I love it. To add a little bit of a pumpkin spice kind of vibe, I used this LA Splash Diamond Dust in the shade Kessel, which is this gorgeous orange shimmery stuff. But once my lipstick was dry, I just went ahead and tapped this on using my finger in the center of my lip area. For hair, I'm gonna part it straight down the center. I'm gonna be using a teasing brush and the Big Sexy Hair Powder Play, which is just going to rough up our hair and prep it to be teased to death. I'm gonna start parting off my hair. I'm not doing it in any specific type of part because as you will see, this hairstyle is not neat or nice or anything like that. I'm just sprinkling this from root to midsection of the hair. It's gonna add a ton of texture so you can start backcombing it and it will actually hold the backcombing because as you can see, that texture just allows for that brush to just grip onto the hair and really get that teasing in there. So I'm just kind of grabbing every piece I can find and really backcombing it until I get that kind of woodsy witch vibe where it just looks disheveled, like I've been hanging out in the woods, doing creepy creepy things, but also nature things. That's the look I'm going for. I'm gonna be using this flower garland that I got from Michaels as a flower crown. So I'm gonna wrap this around my head. My teased hair actually held it into place, but you can of course bobby pin it or hairspray it or whatever you need to do. I also had a couple little plastic spiders lying around. So I decided to put those in my hair as well. But this is the final look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. Say, hey girl, hey, down in the comments box. Cause you know, I love talking to you. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.